Hey everyone, it's Short Round Back with another video review for you. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologise, I've not really been doing much lately. Um, I've been a bit under the weather, you can probably tell if I start coughing halfway through for recording this. Um, but I've not really done anything for a few weeks. Um, quick catch up really, um, I'd not actually ordered the Infinity War though. Um, but then, having watched it again recently and heard that it was imminent, I'd say probably about two weeks ago now, um, I decided, you know what, I'm going to have one because I know as soon as it comes out, I'm going to be super jealous. Everyone is going to have one and I'm not and I'm going to have the face on. So <laughs> I, uh, I kind of hasted the ordered one about two weeks ago um, and then last week I got a notification from Sideshow saying that it was processing and this week the payment was sent and it was shipped out. In fact, it was shipped out today being... Thursday of the kind of 25th of October, I believe it is. Um, it was actually shipped out on the Tuesday the 23rd. So literally two days it took to get from Sideshow in the US, from uh, LA, I believe, all the way to the UK. And I've been and picked it up from the depot today. So um, really quick turnaround on that. I'm actually quite impressed. Um, as well, um, Sideshow weren't terribly expensive either. Not as expensive as I was thinking it was going to be. Um, he worked out at around about £205 for Thor um, and then $20 shipping on top of it, so another £15-£20 on top of that. But then, because I'd just signed up with Sideshow, um, I got a $20 discount off it anyway. So basically the shipping costs were free. Um, so it cost about £205 um, and then on top of that there was um, a DHL fee of about 50 quid. So, you know, £250 for a basically you know a day one figure almost it's about three days behind you probably been inundated with Thor videos by this point but you know in terms of a first day release getting it in the UK from two days is pretty good so thanks Sideshow well done for that one um so here he is this is the box anyway um really really impressed with it I don't know how well we're going to kind of see some of the effects and things on the box to start with but the lights um, in the eyes, it's a lot of the lightning effects in the eyes are, are kind of gloss painted. So when you do shine kind of a light across it, I think you can see it there, there's the light catching just as it kind of flickers through um, his eyes there, which is a really nice touch. That just a little bit of glossy paint, just kind of coating in the right places, just to, you know, just does that box just a little bit of extra quality on there, which I really like. Um, if you've seen the Infinity War box for the Black Widow that we've had thus far, it's basically the same as that, just um, stylized with Thor on it, the, the bottom slides up just here like that and you reveal kind of a corner that's been cut out of it, which is okay I guess. Um, I don't know why they've done that, but it's part of the style I suppose. Um, you've got the icon for Thor with a little Mjolnir symbol on the side, one six scale collectible figure. Um, he's MMS474, which I was quite surprised at really because we're kind of moving on to 500 and beyond now, so really when you think about it, they're, they're advertising these MMS's way, way, way in advance. Um, on the back you've got all the usual secret base, retailers, stickers and things like that on there, and your warnings. Um, the credits are actually on the under layer of this, so when you slip this sleeve off behind it, that's when all your credits and things are. Uh, and on this side you've got the Infinity Gauntlet kind of faded in um, with all the gemstones in it and Thor again and then we're back to the front. So the artwork is beautiful. Um, kind of one for displaying really nice boxes in my cabinet so if it is one that's particularly nice I'll stick it behind the figure um, and this is probably going to be one of those up until I run out of space and I'm putting three or four Infinity War characters in the same shelf but for now it's just Thor so he's going to be living with this box um, again like I said before um, we'll just slip the sleeve off so I can have a nosy inside so inside here that's the clam tray goes in, um, just a little window display. There's a lot of stuff layered on top of Thor, so you can't really see anything beyond that. All the lightning effects are kind of in a big clam tray on top of it there. Um, and then he's got his face covered up and bagged over as well, so you're not going to see much of it. Um, spinning around, just a plain plastic kind of shoebox design. And then you've got your credits on there. So Howard Chan, JC Hong, the usual people on there. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just kind of throw this off to one side and we'll get Thor up here in his kind of basic state and then we'll have a look at all of his accessories as well. Alright, back in a second. 
Okay, so this is Thor, how he is at the start of Infinity War, really. He's, he's not got all of his extra bits and all of his cape and everything on him uh, at this point. It's slightly different to how he comes in the box, um, which we'll get to when we've got like the accessories and we're going over things like that. But I just thought this is a nice, easy starting point to kind of have a look at the face sculpt and the articulation, because nothing's really impeded anything at this point. Um, it's also um, a bit of a, a thing where people at the moment are looking at potentially having two figures because this guy comes with that many accessories that he's nothing short really of a DX figure. Um, I'm very, very surprised that Hot Toys didn't try to pull a fast one uh, and release two separate Thor figures. This one with all kind of the, the kind of battle damaged beginning of the movie version and then the God mode version at the end of it. But actually, you get the complete package with the one figure so you know thanks for that hot toys I'm, I'm glad you didn't pull our pants down over that one um so we'll just bring him a little bit closer and we'll have a look at the face sculpt because that's the bit that's the really impressive bit for the most part really um so there you go sorry i've broken my tripod literally seconds before i started filming but um yeah <laughs> So the face sculpt is absolutely phenomenal. Um, people were praising the Ragnarok Thor for the likeness on him, but there were a little bit of you know things that were off with it. Uh, the temples were slightly too kind of thin or narrow, or just because it was slightly disproportionate because you had the hairpiece that was removable. Um, this guy doesn't suffer from that because, as you'll see, the hair and everything are completely seamless. The head sculpt is a seamless head sculpt. Um, Everything that they've learned about the sculpting process and that, they've took to this figure and then applied it and then some, because it is absolutely spot on. It's arguably the best Hemsworth likeness we've had to date, and it's one of those like with Downey Jr. now, where they're just touching it up, touching it up, touching it up, and getting to that perfect kind of you know, final, that is the portrait for that character, kind of the be-all and end-all version. And for me, right now, that is it. I don't think we'll get a better Hemsworth likeness. Um, just moving around the head sculpt first so you can have a look he's still got the kind of cuts and scars and things in his haircut like he did in the film but remember this is basically set like days after Ragnarok so he's, you know he's probably, his hair doesn't grow back that fast um, apart from you know having a big black scotch mark in your eye evidently does but <laughs> never mind um, so it's really nice The again the detail in it is absolutely fantastic um, what you will notice as well is, uh, again, which is why I'm surprised uh, with this figure hasn't been either two figures or a DX or something, is that this eye patch is actually magnetic and you can just pop it off. Um, it actually has, if you look on the inside of it, just a tiny, tiny magnet. I don't know if how well you're going to be able to see that, but it's a tiny magnet inside the eye patch. And he's got a socket behind his eye and that's where you just kind of pop it on. So it's... Nice and easy to swap that out. Um, and the other thing which is absolutely mind-blowing with this figure, uh, if we get up close into his face, I don't know if we'll be able to catch it right, but hopefully we can. Um, it's just there, you can see that he has got two different coloured eyes, which is awesome. Um, one blue and the brown eye that he gets when Rocket gives him that kind of prosthetic, bionic one. Um, and a little bit of scarring just around his face as well, where he did get um, kind of scratched by uh, by Hella. It's just great, you know. It's just that little bit of extra detail, like I say, that extra mile that really does shine through. Um, to pop the eye patch on, it is a magnet, so it will just clip on if you kind of wang it at him. But don't do that because you might risk damaging some of the face. So if you just gently pop it on there, it rests without any bother. It's really really nice and easy there's no faffing about um in the grand scheme of things in terms of swapping accessories out that's, that's nowhere near as painful um, i've actually haven't changed the runes out because these swap out as well yet and i'm dreading that to be fair but i'll do it for you because essentially that's what i want to be looking for my display anyway um but i will do it um moving down anyway if you look at his his neck um he has got a decent level of rotation in there um, he isn't really capable of looking particularly far up simply because he hasn't got any joint in his neck 
uh, and his hairline at the back catches the back of his neck so be careful of rubbing that if you force it too hard um, but other than that you know it's fine um, it can kind of tilt his head a little bit forward and he's got um, a ball joint in his neck so he's got a bit of side to side and full rotation all the way around it's just looking up and looking down are a bit of a problem um, moving down the suit is really nicely made um, a few pieces like the collar just clip off because that's how you swap the cape out which we'll get to uh, and these breastplate pieces swap out as well and I'm not really sure why but again it's something if you want to do you can uh, and again these runes actually have a light up feature behind them so we'll get to that when we get to our accessories and things but um, the black for now we can put the transparent ones in which have got loads of lightning effects coming off them uh, and then he's actually got a switch in the back which turns the light on which is really really snazzy um, as a consequence however this pot torso piece is a full plastic piece it's not articulated in any way so you can't do any kind of ab crunch or anything like that um, he's, he's pretty straight up and straight down but he doesn't really do much of kind of crouching or anything in the film really anyway um, I suppose he does at the beginning when he's getting beaten up but other than that no it doesn't um, the arms are one of the particular talking points of this figure thus far what people have noticed in that they're very very well done um, they're a lot better quality than previously um, let me just flick the light off so we can actually have a look at things on there as well um, the, just the detail, the definition in those biceps is absolutely fantastic. They've made them so they look a lot more realistic. The veins in them aren't as cartoony as they previously were in the, the Gladiator version as well. Um, they're like that too. So they've they've kind of had another look at these and made even better silicon arms. Um, just the little things like the triceps and everything on there just look so good. Um, and there's even a little bit of hair sculpting on them to make them a little bit more realistic as well. So they look really, really nice. From the back, they look super natural. Like they, they just blow every other uh, arm um, that the Hot Toys have made. Uh, and at the end of this, I'll get the, uh, the Ragnarok Thor. And I've got the Dark World Thor with the bare arms as well. And we can kind of compare them. But these are in a league of their own by comparison. Uh, I know I'm probably waffling a little bit too much about... Uh, an action figure's arms but they really do just look so good by comparison to any other one that we've had thus far um, in terms of articulation for them um, they do have a butterfly um, and they do rotate a full you know 360 all the way around and um, the, the color of the arm armor kind of section here just catches on it so just be careful with a bit of rub but other than that you know you've got your full movement I have just pulled one of his pieces of his torso off though so let me just pop that back on there we go so to bend the arm again this is the other bit which I, again I love about these arms is that they don't look as cartoony and all this silicon doesn't bulge out when you flex them it's really natural um, you know if you look behind the back it doesn't bulge out uncomfortably or anything like that it just looks really natural it's really nice so Again, be careful, as per usual, people know this by now anyway, but just don't leave it in that pose for too long because you can risk it kind of gluing itself closed and then when you open it, it just rips the silicon. Um, but that's just something that, again, everybody will know in time. Um, or you should already know by now. Um, moving down, however, um, this is the other talking point of the figure and really this is the bit that's disappointing and that is his legs. Um, it's not so much his legs as such, I think it's more the, the mat, like the fabric that his legs and his clothes are made from. Um, they've used this quite cheap pleather, so I'll just grab him off his stand and you can have a look. So they've used this cheapish pleather material and it's alright, but because it's that pleathery material it's got no give in it whatsoever. So if you remember the Ant-Man figure, he stood like that. That's as far forward as you're getting that leg and that's me kind of pushing him all up with it really i suppose um much the same to kind of bend it back that's as far back as you're getting it so really it's wishful thinking to think that you're going to get some really good crouch poses on this because you're not um he has got a little bit of kind of spreading his legs but again not too much it's all hampered by all of these different layers or just this type of fabric that's just not got any stretch in it whatsoever uh, and I do worry about it a bit over time as well because I feel like this is the stuff um, that's going to deteriorate. Um, 
In terms of lower down his leg, he has got a double knee joint, but again, the fabric just doesn't permit him to go any further than, than that, really. So it's not ideal. Um, you're probably going to have a very much of a kind of that pose, I guess, with him at the best. I feel like that's what most people are going to do if they've not got him stood upright, just stood, you know, as a museum pose, I suppose. Um, his boots, however, have got these cuff designs, which we've been having a lot of lately. Um, especially over the last few years where the cuff, which is kind of the top half of the boot, is actually separate and it's just slid on. And the bottom of the boot is a separate ball jointed boot, so you get a lot of posability out of those. So you're not going to struggle in terms of how you're going to put your feet to stand him, but you're definitely going to be limited on your options really on how you're going to be able to actually put his legs. Um, that's about it really for, for the kind of bare normal Thor. Um, Sorry about this, the tripod is getting on my nerves just a little bit, but I will try and sort something out, and if not, I'll, uh, I'll buy a new one. Um, but yeah, he's alright. Um, this is not how I'm going to display mine, however, um, what I'll do now is I'll grab all of his accessories and we'll get them out here, and then after that we'll get onto the exciting bit, which is kind of putting them all on him and making him the super awesome god version that we see at the end of the movie. Back in a moment. Okay, so we're back to take a look at his accessories that we've got on here. Um, first thing that you'll look at as soon as you slide the sleeve off the box um, is have a nosy through to the clam tray and you'll have these things looking at you. So these will basically obscure anything else behind it in the box. Um, but they're the ruins that cover his chest plates uh, and also a few extra pieces to go around his wrists that have got loads of lightning effects on them. Um, these runes are also semi-transparent in the center as well, which are designed when you swap them out. You've actually got a light feature built into his chest. His flip the switch on and light comes through all these and it looks absolutely incredible. Um, so I'm really looking forward to swapping these out. I've not actually taken these out of the tree yet, but I've heard they're a bit of a pain in the backside to sort out. But I'll be good doing that anyway because that's how I'm going to display them in my cabinet. So we'll do that um, in a moment when we come to swapping his accessories out and having a look at the figure afterwards. Um, as per usual, you get some instructions and there's quite a lot in here. Um, interestingly enough, um, a few people I know that have done reviews of this previously have, have got an extra sheet in there and I didn't. I actually got it rolled into one, which is quite bizarre. So. Mine might have been a second run and it might have also explained why there was a couple of days delay in Secret Base shipping theirs out and Sideshow shipping theirs out and they suddenly did them simultaneously. So yeah, that's interesting how I've got a, a bit more of a concise version of the instructions. Um, the other thing which is a big, big part of this figure that a lot of people are chatting about is Stormbreaker. Um, I've already swapped out his hand because it was a bit of a nightmare to do so thought I'd do that first before I kind of brought him on the talk to you um, but this is uh, his hammer there's a lot of people complaining about it being slightly inconsistent to how it is in the film things with like all this banding and wrapped around and there's also that cheeky little leaf there which I, I really like I think it's quite cute but apparently it's not in the film um, a lot of people are complaining that it's not in the right scale it's a little bit small the haft's not thick enough and the head of the hammer's not big enough but quite frankly it's basically CGI for most of the bits that is in the film anyway. Um, in fact, I'm, I doubt at all that they've even made a real prop of it, so it probably changes size about three or four times over the course of us seeing it. Um, it is plastic, which is great because it weighs very little. If that had been die cast at the end, that ball ball joint had been popping out of that wrist constantly and you'd have been hearing a horrible bonk as soon as it landed on the bottom shelf of your desk off, I'm sure. So again, I like that it's not die cast. Um, some really nice runes, some really nice sculpting, and some good two tone uh, kind of this airbrushed metal effect on there. Very similar to what the Gladiator Hulk had on his weapons. Um, he's got some runes um, around the front of the hammer head there, and some on the axe as well. It's really, really nice. Um, I'm more into it looking at it now than I was before, because frankly, when I saw the film, I'd have quite liked the kind of metal haft, like the comic book. Um, the ultimate Thor has with the Mjolnir from that comic where it is more like this. Um, it's very evocative of Beta Ray Bill's hammer as well from uh, the comics. Um, so that's really nice. Um, he does come with some extra hands as well as per usual. Uh, it comes with the big splayed fingers which we've seen on about five or six figures that I've reviewed. Um, never mind the 
countless others that have existed. Um, but but that's you know the standard. They've not changed anything there. They, they're still good. Um, much the same as these relaxed hands as well. Um, paint job on them still just as good as it always is. Um, and again, if you've seen these a million times, nothing's really changed there. Um, it does get two um, weapon hands as well. So what clenching hands to wrap around Stormbreaker there. He gets one for each hand if you want to swap it out. And then he gets the two bald fists that are on the figure that we've already seen. Um, the other thing as well that we get now, this is kind of moving on to alternate costume territory, if you want to call it that. Uh, he does have an alternate eye patch, which is really, really cool. Um, this is like a battle damaged one with a crack in it. Um, from what I remember, at the end of Ragnarok, if you watch the end credit scene, he has the one with a little bit of gold flecked into it. Um, literally, that's set like moments before they get attacked, and then we get the kind of open into Infinity War, and then where he's kind of wrapped up and captured and beaten up by Thanos is when you've got this more battle damaged version. So, you know, you can, you can put both in, they're both magnetic as well, they've both got that metal magnetic plate behind them, so you can pick and choose however you want. Which is really nice, that they didn't have to just give you two, um, so that was really cool, I appreciate that. Um, he does have his cape as well, so um, I would recommend popping the head sculpt off the ball joint, and all this does is it pops out with these little studs here. It's not magnetic unfortunately, but it does hold them in quite securely. Uh, and the cape is a really nice kind of double layered fabric. It's really, really good quality. Um, the folds in it are quite nice. Uh, I know a few people that have had theirs. Um, again, my friends uh, Andy and Joe from Keyboard Warriors got theirs. And because the figure comes boxed with this on, they had a big horrible crease down there. So it wasn't ideal packaging it that way. So you could have put another clam tray in the bottom with this on to keep it nice and folded. But all the same, it's still beautiful. The inside print is lovely as well. It's kind of almost runic uh, patterning on there and it repeats itself in these streaks down the outside of the cape. It's a really, really nice piece of, uh, of kind of fabric work there. Uh, I like the pleats and things and the folds that they've already put in it too. Um, the only thing that would have been missing from it, if I've really got a complaint, is it's not got a wire in it, it just floats and it would have been nice to have a wire just running down it so you could put it in some dynamic poses. But again, I'm not complaining, it's just the one thing that I would have liked it to be slightly better. But all the same. Um, when you swap out the cape as well, you also have the option to swap out some of the um, kind of breastplate armour pieces that sit under the chest runes. So if you imagine here, the runes that sit here, uh, he has these plates that sit underneath it and you swap them out. Now, I knocked one off before, and I was wondering, why do you get two? Because it's identical. It isn't, actually. Um, this piece here, where these studs are that sit, it actually lowers the rim for this, and the reason being is when you put those lightning effects in his chest, um, the top ones that go on his breastplates actually have a lot more lightning that sits underneath it, so it's to give it a little bit of clearance so you can fit that lightning effect on there, so that's really cool. Um, and finally, um, you've got his arms here, which are the metal arms, or his armoured arms rather, um, which he has at the end of the film when his cape appears, because apparently, even though Thor is not the god of hammers, as soon as he gets a hammer, he throws it in the air, uh, and he grows a cape and loads of metal armour out of his arms, but, you know, that, that that's perfectly normal, I suppose. Um, but that's... Uh, that's the kind of end effect armor that you get. They do come taped up, so if you can preserve that, I recommend you do, because when you swap his arms out, you actually swap the gauntlets out anyway that sit over there, so it's just some nice protection to keep on there. Um, these are not so much silicon, uh, they're more of a kind of textured plastic that has a lot of give in it, um, and they're really, really nice. The, the kind of bolt gun, uh, gun metal kind of effect is really, really nice, really shiny as well. Um, I'm just peeling that off there, but... Again, when those gauntlets are on, it'll hold it down, it'll be fine. Um, they do have a ball joint that pops in and out. Be brave when you're swapping them. Just give them a yank. The fitting inside there is really, really tough and really durable, so you should be absolutely fine. Just be careful of where you're pulling it from and your kind of pressure points of where it's going to be pulled from and you'll be all right. Um, it does move up and down much the same way as the other arms do on a ratchet joint. And the other thing really cool about these arms is they have a ratchet joint in the elbow, if you listen. That's a really strong ratchet, 
Again, just be careful of letting that sit for too long. You don't want anything kind of gluing itself or uh, molding itself um, on that crease. So just be careful with that, you know, take your pictures and then straighten them out afterwards. But I really like those. That's how I'm going to display my Thor um, with them and the cape on. Uh, and that, I mean, that in terms of accessories, that's it. But I say that's it. It's basically enough to make a second figure, really, minus a body and an alternate head. Um, it does have um, the new style Infinity bases as well. So if you've got um, the Black Widow, you know what to expect, except it's got a flight pole and you can unscrew this and just move the actual thing up and down. You can actually fit it wherever you want. Um, it's a bit of a nightmare when you've got the cape on. You've got this massive big pole here, but if you've got the cape on, I assume you're going to be putting him in a flying pose anyway. Um, the bases actually aren't new. I say new, they're actually the Robocop base from years ago now that's just been repurposed. Um, they've been using it on the new Black Panther characters and they've been doing it on the Infinity War ones. And I think the idea is that you can kind of rack up a few in proximity to each other. There's a lot of contact flat surfaces and I also think that's why they've got rid of the uh, the silver placards that fit on the front and just printed it on so you can actually put people in front of others um, and it's not going to kind of obscure or anything. The uh, the glossing on the Avengers logo is really nice as well. When the light catches it, it just highlights the edges, which is really cool. Uh, and it does feel like a good quality kind of sticker on there as well. So um, it's nice. I would have liked a crotch cradle as well as this flight pole, as per usual. They don't give us both, but I'm used to that by now. What I'll now do um, is I'll swap out all of his accessories uh, and kind of put him into his, his final form version uh, and I'll put some batteries in him as well because he does come with some batteries for the light up feature but again they're not going to stay in that long just because I don't trust leaving batteries in these things. Um, so we'll get him back out of here with all of his bells and whistles on him and we'll have some final thoughts. Back in a moment. So here he is with all of his accessories applied to him, all the special effects, uh, and I've even put him on his base flying, um, so he's not just stood upright like he was before. Um, I've not put the lights on just yet, I'll do that in a moment so you can see them, but the kind of when I was switching them out and putting the batteries in, they're absolutely blinding, so I just kind of didn't want to detract from the figure. Uh, it's very evocative of the Ultimate store with these on, uh, but then the metal arms and things actually bring him back more towards kind of the Marvel Comics version from about 10 years ago. So kind of before the kind of old man King Thor, the version of him then, it looks very much like that with those runes on his chest. So uh, again, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I love the way that they've taken the direction of it. Um... Just as a quick kind of aside, um, I know a lot of people have been complaining about those runes on his chest and swapping them out in particular and getting the normal ones out of there because they are a bit of a pain in the backside. Um, I've just got one of them here. This is one of the main ones from the actual breast piece here that sits just right at the very top. Um, and if you look around the outside, I'm not sure how well it's going to focus on here, but just, just there, you'll notice that there is a tiny lip that's the bit you want to get your finger under and just give it a pull to loosen it and then pull the whole thing out. Um, just try not to kind of get anything to claw them out or anything because you might be scratching these, ripping these catches or even just damaging the actual chest plate itself. But they do have a little nub, uh, like a little indentation for you to get your finger in there to pull them out. Um, with that said, they did probably take me about 10-15 minutes to swap out just because I was being careful with them. Um, now that I'm a bit more used to how they're going to be removable, it might not be as bad the second time. But just be careful because I think they did miss a trick really in not having them as magnets or just having them being able to pin in. Having them clip in like that is a bit dangerous. So just take your time with it, I suppose. Other than that, here he is with Stormbreaker, how he appears at the end of the film. And he definitely looks like he wants some Thanos. Um, I really, really like it a lot. The look of him, but as soon as you remove the eye patch, you've got a completely different Thor. Um, I'll just get in a little bit closer there so you can have a nosy at him as well. Um, it just looks so much different as soon as you put those arms on, the different lightning bolts coming out of his chest, and, and just getting rid of the eye patch just makes him look a completely different figure. Uh, and it's something that they could have quite easily gotten away with and released as a second figure if they'd have wanted to. Um, I'm glad they didn't because it would have been very expensive because I'd have probably wanted both. Um, although arguably some people are probably now saying it's equally as expensive because they just want to buy two of these so they've got one of each. Um, people again, like I said, the subject of contention was the Stormbreaker. 
Um, I've not got a problem with it. I think it's in just about the right proportions. Um, and again, I think it's CGI for most of what we see in the film. I don't even think they made a real prop of it. So, um, you know, they, they, they went with the image that they'd saw and, and that's the version that they, they produced. So um, there are, I say there is talk. Um, it's a real thing now. It's up for pre-order if you wanted an alternate Mjolnir or Stormbreaker that lights up. Um, it's got loads more of these little blue thunder effects that come onto it uh, and the actual head of the hammer has got LEDs in it. Uh, from what I've seen it is a little bit pricey, it's about $50. Uh, it's up on um, one Six Kits website at the moment and I'll link it in the description if you want to go there and look at picking one up or if you're just interested in having a nosy at it, it's there. Uh, it might be something that I'm tempted to get hold of myself um, but for now I do really like him. Um, this is the cape applied as well. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but just swap the head off. So pop the head off and it just clips off on the shoulders with no problems. The flight stand does cause it to billow outwards just a little bit here, but it, it'll do that whether he's stood upright or not. So I guess the higher you have the flight stand, the better. But if you're looking at him front on, you don't really see that bulge at the back. It's kind of like what happened with Superman when you had that flight stand kind of clipping around his waist as well. Um, just happens with everybody I guess. Uh, the arms you do have to pop the wrists off uh, or the hands off at the wrist rather to slide these lightning effects on there um, and all of these aren't movable so they do have enough flex in them though they're quite a, a, a very non-brittle kind of rubbery plastic so they've got a bit of giving them so you can catch them if an arm is moving past them or things like that you're not going to snap them easily. Uh, still, that said, be careful, but you know, you, you, you've got a little bit of leeway with them. Um, I'll quickly just turn the lights off uh, in the room and turn the lights onto his chest and you will see how almost deafeningly bright they are. So, back in a second and I'll pop them on for you. So, I've quickly just popped the lights off, uh, apart from the ones above me. So, the cabinets are off now and it's just how insanely bright um those chest plates are uh, in fact i turned them on before i'd put the runes on there uh, and it was ridiculous um, i'll never be looking for a torch ever while i've got this figure um just to pop the lights on behind um oh, you don't see my silly reflection there um and it does drain it out ever so slightly it looks so impressive um to kind of top this off as well uh, which i didn't mention before in the head sculpt there is actually some uv paint over his eyes as well so if you've got a black light or a UV light, you can shine it at him and his eyes will glow with like a bluey purple colour as well, which would be really cool. Um, I'd quite like, again, if they do that third party Stormbreaker, if they put a little bit of that kind of paint on there as well. And if not, I'll probably buy some and, and do it myself and kind of put a little bit more glow on it. Um, I believe these kind of show up under the UV as well, the actual lightning effects. But it might be something worth looking at if anybody's looking at customising or anything like that. Um, if they're putting a UV light in a cabinet, for example, putting a bit of extra UV paint on the thunder effects themselves to make them pop too. It looks absolutely spectacular though with the lights on it. I'm a really big fan. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm in love with this figure. So I'll just quickly grab um, the Gladiator Thor from Ragnarok and also the Dark World Thor as well. And we'll kind of have a bit of a side by side and just have a quick kind of reflection at them. I might do a separate comparison video, so I'm not going to go into too much depth, but it's really just to look at the Hemsworth face sculpt and see how it's evolved over time. Okay, back in a second. So, this is all three of what we'd argue was the best three Thors. Um, prior to the Infinity War one, it was without question that these were the best two um, that you could get. Um, this is the Dark World Light as Guardian Armoured version of Thor um, and it's arguably what everybody said is the best long haired incarnation of Thor and the better Chris Hemsworth head sculpt that we've had. Um, it is looking a little bit dated now, it's not as great but I mean even when people now, I know um, like I said my good friend Andy over at Keyboard Warriors, um, he's actually swapped this head out and put it on his road worn Thor which is from the Ragnarok film which is a more recent figure. Um, so even so, still, this is, is the better version. Um, this one, um, the actual Ragnarok Thor himself, is, is alright. He's, he's, he's very much spot on likeness of Chris Hemsworth. It's just the little bits that just needed tweaking, um, like the um, where the, the head is here and it bulges out to accommodate that hair, head sculpt thing where it pops off. just doesn't look quite as natural, so I get why people 
don't like that as much. Um, the Infinity War one is absolutely 100% Chris Hemsworth. Um, it's, it's perfect. I can't stress how good it is. And the only thing that I would have very much liked, and if anybody who's any kind of level of sculptor or doing any third parties of it are listening, do me an angry one, because I'd love a Bring Me Thanos angry shouty face. And it's the only thing that that figure's missing, um, is that they all look a little bit too deadpan. Um, the arms on the Ragnarok and the um, Dark World Thor are both the same, and I mean, these are the same arms that we've had for a while in terms of those rubberized synthetic silicone arms um, it's the same ones that Bane had from the Dark Knight films as well where they've got this really obnoxious vein that sticks out here and it doesn't look natural at all um, and as soon as you bend the arm there you get this here which I'm just gonna have a zoom in on it you get kind of this fat fold here which really doesn't look natural you know anybody who creases a bicep up does not have a big blob of fat especially if the kind of the big muscle man that Chris Hemsworth is um, Obviously, I've not got him on the Infinity War Thor at the moment, but uh, he just looks absolutely incredible. And again, when we've looked at those arms previously, they just shine. They, 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 if somebody's saw those arms and gone, let's take this to the next level, and they have done. So again, excellent work, Optoys. Thank you so much um, for, for just doing an outstanding job. And if this really is how the Infinity War line's going to kick off and it's going to go... I can't wait to see what comes next. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to that Thanos figure because we've barely seen anything of it. Um, and obviously he comes with a, an alternate head as well, so I'm interested to see what that does. Um, with that said, uh, I'm going to probably do a, a better comparison video of these figures and kind of work through it in more detail if anybody would like to see that. Drop me a link in the comments. Um, and if anybody's got this thought or if you've got any thoughts on it themselves, uh, any, anything that you want to discuss, Drop it in the comments below uh, and I'll message back. Um, really, really appreciate everyone's viewing thus far over the time. I've, I've gone beyond 100 followers now, so really, really thank you so much for everyone who's been watching recently uh, and has been uh, been following me. I appreciate it. Um, with that said, I've got a few more reviews to do. Now I'm not dying anymore, so uh, I'll catch up with those. There's a few Transformers and things that I, I've been needing to do for quite a while, so I'll catch up with that. Um, but with that said, um, I hope you enjoy the review and I'll catch you next time. See you again. Bye bye.